Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to a brand new week of AutoLine Daily. Later on in the show, I'll tell you why the U.S. should set a goal of getting off OPEC oil. But now let's get to the news. You know, it's one thing to look at all the different cars that are coming out and tracking how well they're selling. But all these car companies are in business to do one thing, make money. And that's why we like giving you a simple snapshot of how these companies are performing on the bottom line. I say that because we just got Volkswagen's full year earnings for last year. The company sold 9.728 million new cars and commercial vehicles, which puts it just a smidgen ahead of General Motors. Its revenue grew slightly to $260 billion, which puts it well ahead of Toyota. You know, if Volkswagen was a country, it would have the 38th largest economy in the world. VW posted an operating profit of $15.4 billion and a net profit of nearly $13 billion. You can ignore that 58% drop on the bottom line. The year before, VW's profit was wildly inflated on a one-time basis as part of its integration of Porsche. Hey, you want to know how to get a job as a top executive in a German car company? Start your career at a different German car company. Volkswagen quickly snatched up Andreas Rentschler after he abruptly quit Daimler last month. He's now running Volkswagen's commercial truck division, the same job that he held at Daimler. Meanwhile, Daimler just named Bernd Pischitzreiter to its supervisory board. He also served stints as the CEO of BMW and later as the CEO of VW. You know, in the past, you never saw top executives jumping from one car company to another, especially not in Europe. Well, we didn't expect this story to go away anytime soon. After losing out on or organizing Volkswagen's plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the UAW has filed an appeal with the National Labor Relations Board over interference by politicians and outside special interest groups during the vote from earlier this month. The union cited statements from Republicans in the state legislature threatening to end incentives for VW if the union was accepted. Republican Senator Bob Corker claimed VW would not build a new vehicle in Tennessee if workers joined the UAW. The NLRB will determine whether or not these are reasons enough to hold a new election. But with the five-member NLRB board comprised of three Democrats and two Republicans, I think the UAW has a good chance of getting a, a second shot at this. First, Microsoft passed on Ford's Alan Mulally as its next CEO. Now the Dearborn automaker is dumping Microsoft. Sometime this year or next, the company plans to switch to BlackBerry's QNX operating system for Sync instead of using Microsoft. The change is not too unexpected because Ford has been hurt in recent quality surveys due to software problems with Sync. And Ford just showed off its refreshed version of the Focus. It gets a few minor changes to the front and rear fascias. New for the U.S. is Ford's one-liter three-cylinder EcoBoost engine, which will be mated to a six-speed manual. The car also gets an upgraded chassis and suspension for a more connected feel to the road. And the interior has been refreshed as well. It goes on sale in the second half of the year. Hyundai will unveil this concept at the Geneva Motor Show called the Entrado. Its body panels are made of lightweight steel, while its structure is made from carbon fiber. It shows off a hydrogen fuel cell with a 36 kilowatt hour battery pack. While this is still a concept vehicle, reportedly the Entrado shows where the styling of the next generation Tucson could be headed. Coming up next, I'll tell you why the United States should set a goal of getting off OPEC oil, and it could be done before the decade is out. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. Do you remember the first oil embargo? I do. 
I remember the long gas lines, the dread of not being able to drive where I wanted to go, and that sick to the pit of my stomach feeling that America would never be the same again. It wasn't. When OPEC slashed oil production in late 1973 to protest the U.S. support of Israel, prices quadrupled almost overnight, and the economic damage was immediate. The U.S. economy limped through the rest of the 1970s, suffering anemic growth, sky-high inflation, and stubborn unemployment. Ever since then, the U.S. has dreamed of becoming energy independent. Now, nearly 40 years later, that dream is within our grasp. Remember, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries is a cartel. Cartels are illegal in the U.S. and the rest of the developed world, so why are we dealing with an illegal organization? Today, the U.S. uses over 18 million barrels of petroleum and petroleum products every day. About 40% of that is imported, and about half of that, or just under 4 million barrels a day, is imported from OPEC. So we need to put a plan together to get rid of that 4 million barrels. CAFE regulations should eliminate 2 million barrels by 2025. U.S. energy production is expected to grow by the equivalent of 2 million barrels in that time frame. So the math sure looks doable. Don't you think the American public would get to rally around a goal to get off OPEC oil the same way the country took to President Kennedy's challenge to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade? I sure do. It's a simple message that everyone can understand, and I think the effect would be electric. So I hope you can help me in getting the word out. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your elected officials. Let's get off OPEC oil. Anyway, that's my opinion. I would like to hear yours. Shoot us an email or use the comments section of the website. And that wraps up today's report. Thank you for watching.